Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Walt here from Down the Block Sports, and today I want to talk about the NBA. According to multiple reports, we have a three-team trade between the Lakers, Jazz, and Timberwolves. What I want to talk about today is who was involved in the trade, who's the winner of the trade, and how this affects all three teams moving forward. Again, I'm Alex Walt. This is Down the Block Sports. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more of my exclusive content. Yes, according to multiple reports, we do have a three-team trade in the NBA. The Los Angeles Lakers are receiving D'Angelo Russell, Malik Beasley, and Jared Vanderbilt. The Minnesota Timberwolves are receiving Mike Conley, Nikhil Alexander-Walker, and draft picks. And the Utah Jazz will receive Russell Westbrook, Juan Toscano-Anderson, Damian Jones, and a lightly protected 2027 first-round pick. That is all according to ESPN's Adrian Wojnarowski. So let's break down this three-team trade. Uh, The Los Angeles Lakers were a team that was looking to make an impact move at the deadline and try and win a championship during LeBron James' final years in the NBA. They have Anthony Davis, one of the best big men in the NBA. Russell Westbrook wasn't a perfect fit in that offense also just had as recently reported some issues with the head coach during one of the recent Laker games. So their way of getting an impact guy is someone who used to be a Los Angeles Laker in D'Angelo Russell. Russell immediately is going to enter the starting lineup here for the Lakers. The D'Lo is a guy who's having a pretty solid year this year, having averaging 17.9 points and 6.2 assists per game, shooting nearly 40% from three. So when you look at this offense, someone who can help facilitate alongside LeBron James and be a second, even third scoring option. But when you include Anthony Davis, he's someone who should fit in in that offense almost immediately. Now, when you look at outside of D'Lo, Malik Beasley and Jared Vanderbilt, two guys the Lakers just got in this trade, are going to make an immediate impact in this rotation as well. I mean, when you look at Lonnie Walker, Malik Beasley, two guards there, that's a really good duo. Uh, Beasley's a guy who can start or come off the bench and provide immediate energy. He's a guy who can score on multiple levels of the floor. He's someone who provides immediate impact on this Lakers team. Jared Vanderbilt's one of the more underrated players in the league. You can put him at the five. You can play him at the four. He can defend multiple positions. He's extremely long, good shot blocker, good rebounder. Someone who can really complement Anthony Davis and LeBron James when you sandwich him in that rotation. Um, I do like that the Lakers have gone after length and athleticism here at the deadline. Um, Malik Beasley's an athletic guard. Jared Vanderbilt's an athletic big. They also added Rui Hachimura from the Washington Wizards earlier this offseason, who can also play that role of defending multiple guys and has a a three-point shot. Um, Vanderbilt, not really so much there, but he's someone who can provide energy and do a lot of plays that a lot of guys in Lakers aren't going to do. So I think when you look at this deal for the Lakers, D'Lo, Beasley, and Vanderbilt are three guys who are going to make an immediate impact in this rotation and really help a guy like LeBron James chase the title for uh, as he goes towards the end of his career. Now, when you look at the Timberwolves here, uh, they lose D'Lo, they add Conley. They also add Nikhil Alexander-Walker, someone who's going to be coming off the bench. Conley joins a team, uh, went healthy with Cat, Anthony Edwards, and Rudy Gobert. Um, I actually think Conley is an amazing fit. You look at what they need, they need playmaking and they need defense. That's both what Conley provides. He's averaging over seven points per game or seven assists per game, excuse me. And he's been a solid defensive player his entire career. He's not going to take too much scoring away from Cat and Anthony Edwards. He's going to set them up well for shots behind the perimeter. He has experience playing with Rudy Gobert when Gobert was a member of the Utah Jazz. So this improves them defensively. This, in my opinion, is going to improve the ball handling. And I don't think there's going to be really any competition on who's going to be providing the scoring. I think the number one and two options in that offense is pretty obvious. And finally, from the Jazz perspective, uh, they're getting Russ, who in my opinion, isn't going to be a long-term member of the Jazz. We've seen reports that he could get bought out after this trade. Um, That hasn't happened yet as I'm recording, but getting Toscano, Anderson, Jones, a lightly protected first-round pick. When you want to talk about this deal for the Jazz, man, they lose Beasley, Vanderbilt, and Conley, and they get Russ, who they might not keep, 
two potential bench players and a lightly protected first round pick. I understand that Danny Ainge is trying to get draft picks, but man, you are really underselling your assets. I mean, I understand Mike Conley's not what he used to be like when he was with the Memphis Grizzlies. He is expensive, um, but he is a starting caliber point guard in this league. I think the Jazz sold really low on their assets. Now, again, I don't know what that draft pick is going to be in 2027. I don't think the Lakers are going to be amazing that time because LeBron's getting older and I have no idea who's going to be on the team at that time. But I'm sure the protections are for early in that draft. So if the Lakers are terrible and get the number one pick, it's probably not going to the Utah Jazz. So um, the winner of this trade, in my opinion, this is easy. It's the Lakers. Um, You get an impact starting point guard. You have two guys who are going to enter your rotation, probably coming off the bench, at least to start. Um, you have a score, a guy who can make a very large impact offensively, Malik Beasley. You have someone who can make that impact off the bench defensively in Jared Vanderbilt. Uh, the Lakers did a really good job in this trade, adding real impact to their rotation. Now, I'd say second easily is the Timberwolves. I think Conley's a really good fit. You know, I, I, I always looked at that team as a team that was really underperforming. Uh, a team that should be better than what their record is. I understand they're dealing with injuries right now, but Conley is a veteran. Conley is someone who provides great defense. He's someone who is also a good playmaker. Uh, he's someone who I think day one's going to step in and be a real mature presence in this starting lineup. Do I love the Timberwolves' depth? No, but I do think Conley is a great fit in this offense. When I look at the Jazz, hate this deal for them. I think this is a terrible deal for the Jazz especially if they don't keep Russ. Um, I don't think there's any reason for Russ to think that Utah is a long-term option. I don't think Utah is looking at Russell Westbrook as someone they're going to give an extension to or someone they keep him long-term. They are rebuilding. They're now going to have um, some new players in their starting lineup, probably Sexton. Of course, if Russell isn't there, he's someone who could take over at their guard position. But this team got a lot worse. I think they're going to try and almost tank really here. They started off the season very well, but really haven't been productive very since. So I love this deal for the Lakers. I like this deal for the Timberwolves and I hate this deal for the Utah Jazz. What do you think of this three team deal between the Lakers, Timberwolves and Jazz? Feel free to give me your thoughts in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more of my exclusive content. Thank you everyone for tuning in and we will see you very soon.